Hello, Blake Rudis here with Everyday HDR and HDRinsider.com, and today I'm doing a specific tutorial for the readers of Digital Photography School for an article called The Most Important Element for Making Infallible Photographs in Photoshop. And I do believe that this is the most infallible method for that. So along with that, I created an action. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up the zip file called DPS Article Extras, Blake Rudis. When we open that up, we're gonna see downloads, and here you can follow along with me. Here is the picture to follow along with, and then if you double click, Contrast Checker. That's gonna be the action that we're gonna use for this. So if we go to Window and press Actions, or press Alt F9, that will open our Actions panel. Now, if you double click that .atn file called Contrast Checker, it's going to load right here in the bottom of our Actions palette. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just press play on Contrast Checker, and it only takes a second. What it does is it creates a gradient map of my photograph, and that gradient map is just a good black and white image, and it's a baseline to start with. So when I look at this photograph, I see that it pretty much looks gray to me. There's not a whole lot of black, and there's not a whole lot of white. But how do I know that? Well, part of that is because I have a trained eye for this kind of thing, and the other part is that if I go into the Curves Adjustment layer here and press Alt or Option and click on the black triangle, I can see that I have an all-white photograph. Now what this is telling me is that there is no black point right now in my photograph. So if I move this to the right just a slight bit, you'll start to see black appear. So what they did was, let's go ahead and take the eyeball off, it made our photograph just a slight bit more dramatic on the black side and all those shadow and dark areas in our photograph. So now we're gonna go over to the right hand side and press Alt or Option and click on the white triangle. This is telling us that that one spot right there, which is probably just a specular highlight in the clouds, is the whitest white portion in my photograph. So if I move this over just a slight bit to the left, I'm gonna start making more things a little bit whiter in the photograph. So now if I click on the curves, you can see that we've already made a pretty dramatic photo here. But if I go ahead and remove the gradient map, you can see that it's doing a lot to my photo, but it still can go a little bit further. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click the, on the Curves Adjustment layer here and click the Targeted Adjustment tool. So when you click on that Targeted Adjustment tool, take a look at your curve and notice that there's a little white circle that bounces all over the place as you move over the image. That's telling you if you click there, you're going to be affecting that part of the tone curve. So I'm going to click right here on this portion and just move it up just a little bit to give that light portion of grass a little bit more, uh, make it a little bit lighter, a little bit more inviting down there, and then click on a dark portion of this grass because I don't like how it affected that, and just drag that down just a slight bit to make that a little bit darker. So now what I'm going to do is just go up here to the clouds and just select an area that is white but has a little bit of detail. So if you look over at the curve, I'm looking at it now, it's bouncing around and it's moving probably about midway to that quadrant. Click there and just drag it up to make that a little bit more brighter. All right, so here is where the magic happens. We've got ourselves a really good black and white photograph right now. If we click off this eyeball, we can see that we've added a lot of drama and a lot of depth to our photograph almost immediately with that really quick adjustment. So if I remove the eyeball from the gradient map, we'll see that our photograph actually looks a whole lot better right now. But if I don't like the fact that that, that curve is affecting the color, I can go down here to my blending options and click luminosity and only affect the tones in the image rather than the colors in the image. Now I actually do prefer how it's affecting my colors, so I'll just make that normal. So from here, I could actually probably stop because this looks pretty good, but it's just not enough. So in the contrast checker, I also added a dodge and burn adjustment layer. It's basically an adjustment layer that I've created. If you go ahead and press play, what that does is it's going to have this window pop up. It says you are now set for non-destructive dodging and burning. Now there's a difference. Destructive dodging and burning would be if you grabbed your dodging and burning tool and just went right away onto the image, that would start destroying the image not necessarily destroying it, but it leaves a permanent mark on your photograph. Whereas this layer is a non-destructive dodging and burning layer. So it automatically selects your dodge tool. I always start with the dodge tool. It's gonna to make things lighter. But if you wanna to switch to your burn tool, just press alter option and hold it while you're, while you're drawing. And that will go ahead and flip over to the uh, burn tool on the fly from the dodge tool. 
So if you just go ahead and press continue, that's just a message that I've created for you that kind of gives you an idea of what you're doing with your photograph when you're doing it with this dodge and burn layer. So I've got my dodge and burn layer selected. I usually have my exposure at about 15, anywhere from 10 to 15. And then I'm going to go into my dodge tool. It's already selected. I just want to make sure it's selected. I'm going to press the left bracket key to make this brush a little bit smaller. And I'm going to start dodging areas in this grass and just kind of make this grass just a little bit more inviting. Now, if I were to do this on that curve, I could do it on that curve. But if I do it on the curve, it's going to be affecting the entire photograph. So this is where I get to go in and do things on my own a little bit. So I'm going to minimize this actions palette. And now I'm going to press and hold Alt. Now, if I press and hold Alt, that's going to give me the the burn tool. So I can burn in some of this grass in the foreground. I'm also going to dodge out. I'm going to take Alt off and I'm going to dodge out some of this area right here in this building. And then I'm going to press the burn tool, burn some of that portion back, burn some of that back. Maybe burn this portion of the city back. I love Kansas City. It's got such a beautiful skyline. And just burn all that back. Maybe burn this a little bit. Dodge the front of it a little bit. Dodge that side. And then dodge Union Station here because that is my focal point. So if I dodge it and make it lighter, it automatically becomes brighter and right in your face like that. So that's kind of the effect that I'm going for there. So again, I added more depth. So let's look at the beginning. This is the before and this is the after. Now, this whole tutorial took me six minutes and 30 seconds to do at this point. And if I wasn't teaching this to you, if I wasn't talking you through this, you can see that you could have created this same aspect on your photograph in much less time because you're not talking about it. You're just doing it. So what at the beginning, it might be kind of difficult to get that trained eye to see that this is not necessarily a great black and white photograph. But once you start using those clippings and you start understanding those clippings and knowing that this is a good black and white photograph because of the depth, there's white and there's black and there's a smooth gradation in between, just like I discussed in the article, this is where you start getting good black and white images and this is also where you start getting good regular photographs. Like this is our after. So there's before and there's after. Again, I'm Blake Rudis with Everyday HDR and HDRinsider.com.